a new song, a new song I will sing, a new My old song is so weary I learned it long ago It repeats over and over and over And burdens my heart and my soul Don't get me wrong It was a good song and you know I play that hand But the chorus is tired No longer inspired Not up to a new demand I am ready to sing my new song fashion new lyrics and melodies that have never been sung before I fill my voice with possibilities creating a brand new score I am ready to sing my new song
to be my new soul my new soul Valerie Joy Fitmont on piano. Oh. <laughs> My new song. I, um, I was especially moved. And uh, should I be speaking? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I didn't recall seeing the cue, so... I was particularly moved, and I thought, oh, can I remember that part of the lyric? And so I was looking on my phone. Etika Luckett, the amazing Etika Luckett, and I wrote this song. I don't even remember when. I don't know when it was. You don't either. A while ago. A while ago. And um, when I looked on my phone and I, I don't know if, even if the lyrics are there, because what I had was emails from Erica about the song. And so I'm just in a... I'm having a bit of a moment. Um, here's the thing. That song means so much to me, just in the, the crafting of it and the way that it's written on my heart. Uh, this is this period in heart and soul as we are still launching this year and our clear intention for the year and for our lives. You know, it's not like there's a year that's outside of our lives. So any year that we are, are focused on bringing into clarity and um, I want to say like a clear design for living, is a part of the life, is a part of the life that you're living in and will inform it in, in the most magnificent way. So what I know for heart and soul, what I'm declaring for heart and soul is that we're in the get ready. We're in this place where, where we can, um, we're in this place of knowing that something more is required of us. And you know, somewhere on the continuum, somewhere on the spectrum of willingness to do something, to be something different. Because here's the thing, I know you already know it, but somehow I'm guided to say it right now. If you were the one who could have that life you want, you'd already have it. That instead, where we are is we're in the desire of a new living. And that's okay. That's not a criticism. It's just a reality that we can't be where we aren't. And so what it means to me is we have work to do. But I don't know that there's ever been a time or will ever be a time that we don't have work to do. So it's not like, oh, shoot, more work. If you're here. And the alternative is you not here, and I don't know what goes on beyond you being here. I do know about this realm. And so if you're here, it pretty much means you signed up for more work. <laughs> now, let's be clear, it doesn't mean you have to do it. It just means you signed up for more work. It's like the rest of your life. You know, this isn't that different than the rest of your life. There's other stuff in your life that you signed up to do and you're not doing it. <laughs> this doesn't have to be different. I just want us to be clear. You, does that make sense? That, isn't it important that we get a level of clarity about this, though? So there's nothing that being here is going to make you do or be or have. It's up to you. But it's present for all of us. 
That's for sure. So, so this notion of where we are right now, I am calling, we're at the get ready. Come on, temptations. <laughs> you know, they tried to tell us, we get ready, what? Because here I come, 2024. Here I come. I'm getting ready for the highest possible outcomes in my life. The axiom is, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. But it pretends like there's a place called stay ready that precedes getting ready. And I think that sometimes it's the axioms that throw us off. Because we're like, well, if I, if I stay ready, I don't have to get ready. Well, now see, you didn't confuse the whole idea. You're going to have to get ready and stay ready long enough so that you can establish that you can stay ready. You can't stay ready in the getting ready part. Right? Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure, see if we, have the, if we have the ducks lined up in the proper order, I think we can make a little more progress. But we are, and there are those who might intentionally confuse us. They would want us believing that you can be in a stay ready before you ever got ready. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So look. Can I? Okay, I got to. So look, the song, my new song that Takiya brings to us so beautifully. On paper, it's not the same. In my heart, it is. But look, this notion of recognizing that our old song is weary. Thank you, Pam. And acknowledging simultaneously at the same time that although it's weary, I'm going to acknowledge it was a good song. It got me through some stuff. I sang that song to get me over some stuff. But I'm over the stuff now. I can't sing that song no more. Unless I'm willing to continue to have that being just a repetitive process. In the stuff, sing the song, out of the stuff, keep singing the song, back in the stuff, sing the song, out of the stuff. I mean, we can do that. You can design this life any way you want. I'm just thinking if you're here today, are tuned in, you probably have a vision for something more. Not just a higher count, but a higher expression. That more doesn't mean it's not feeding greed. I almost want another word, but no, we just gonna have to keep the word straight because you know words have multiple meanings. You just gonna have to keep the meaning straight in your mind as we work through this. Because we are declaring manifesting more in 24. But it's important, you almost, I almost want you to put an asterisk in mind that it's not about just how much can I get. This ain't that. This is instead an expansion of heart. It's an expansion of intention. It's an expansion of willingness. It's an expansion of the vision for who and how you be. It's an expansion of your intention to do life in a different way. Why? Because you have an intention to be different. And when those two come together, it begins to shift everything. The, do you have the lyrics here? Are they on the thing? May I have them? I can just help myself. Behind? All right, thank you very much. Because there's a little part I want to get to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. God. This part right here. In our readiness... In our readiness, 
There's the getting ready part. I will listen. So we've already talked about how it's been. I got some stuff I know I have. I got a good song, but it's weary now. It's not up to, the song says, the new demand. It, it worked for the old stuff I had. When I was 16, when I was 25, when I was 45, 52. <laughs> so, <laughs> those old songs worked. We could all name the time. If we, if, we, if we laid out our timeline, we'd have those songs. But we can't sing them now. James Thunder Early told you, right? He said, I can't sing no more sad songs. It's a moment. There's a moment where you realize what you've been doing no longer serves. Yes? And then there's the shift of the get ready for something else. All right, look at here. I will listen for golden harmony humming up above. Y'all need to, I don't, oh, we wrote some lyrics, I'm telling you. Weaving in grace and forget. What I want you to get in this is that there's a vision unfolding. So it's not here yet. What does it say? I will. I will. I'll begin to do this. I'm in the get ready. I had some stuff that worked. I know I have to do it different now. You know I've stopped talking about the song and I'm in your business now, right? <laughs> we transitioned into your business, your life now, right? So now what we're doing is we're, we're weaving in grace and forgiveness because whatever this new thing is, it's going to have to be set up in a different way. We cannot expect a new outcome if we keep doing the same thing. If we just rehash the same vision, if we just rehash the same steps, the same objective kind of dressed up a little different, is not going to get us the new life, the new vision. Does this make sense? Yes. This part right here, I'm ready to right old wrongs. Willing to clean it up. Willing to do it different. This is the get ready part, right? It re thank you. <laughs> Somebody's with me. <laughs> Look at here. <laughs> Is there, is there another way that I can say it or another way that I can share it or, or something else that you'd need to know? Because I want us to make this move together. Just in terms of, of the idea for today, the thesis, if you will. This idea of us using a new song as the metaphor for our get ready. Is there a question or is there, a, is there something that's holding us from, from getting this idea that at the core is that something more is required of us. Is there a question? That wasn't rhetorical. All right. We in, it, we in this together then, yes? Y'all yes. got it. Okay, good. So look, tomorrow, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And it's literally the birthday. Literally the birthday. It's, it's set up to, in, to celebrate and coincide with the birthday, but it's the third Monday regardless of whether it falls. It just so happens that tomorrow... I wanted to connect these ideas... <clears throat> Excuse me, please. In this way. Because those of us <clears throat> I'm I'm just choosing my words here, who have the blessing of having been around. I um Reverend Jack back in the late 80s, had a ministry. And 
I um, did a piece, and I'm not recalling when this was, but it was around Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I don't know if it was for the birthday. It might have been because this was all happening in the mid-80s when there was some movement around it being a holiday. So my sense is that's exactly what it was. And so I, I read a piece, and, and um, after I read it, I, I had a bit of centering that I established, and I said, think back to where you were, you know, when you first heard about Dr. Martin Luther King and what the words were and, and that, and even when he, when he passed, and <laughs> afterwards, so many of the people came up and told me they were not alive during that time. You know, and, and so it's important to know the audience. But as I look, I think we can, we have a sense. Many of us have a sense of that time. And because it's very different now, we're celebrating. We have a national holiday where 50 states have consigned to it. But that wasn't always the case. Some of us remember that it was a huge fight that all of, the, all of the stuff was pulled out in order to interrupt that. But I love the way that this establishes it, that it, first of all, that it took a lot of campaigning and guest appearances. I don't think I have, I don't. Please bring me those other glasses. Thank you. My apologies, y'all. Thank you very much. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I knew it was there. <laughs> that it required a lot of campaigning and guest appearances. I read something about, what is this? Something happening now. What is this? Something, uh, my apologies. There's something, oh, oh, you know what it is? It's, um, it's the food program, the federal pr food program that's available for every state. And there are some states that are opting out. It's the, the uh, food for children so that no child would go hungry is the idea. And it's a lot of money for every state and could make a difference. And so there are states who are standing outside of that as an option for them. And someone wrote on social media that the way to do it would be to get some athletes and celebrities and have them speak out for it. And then, because that, do, do you see where we are? That that is the kind of thing that could make a difference because they would see the power of those voices and that presence. But that's what happened here as well. That's exactly what happened here, that Stevie Wonder wrote the, the birthday song. You remember that? And Ted Kennedy spoke, and the National Football League said if Arizona didn't, that if, um, yes, that they would move the, was it the Super Bowl? They would move the game. They would move the Super Bowl, and they did. And two years later, Arizona was in. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that as if it's causal, because I think it is, but it may not be. All I know is kind of the data points. Here's, here's what I'm trying to lay out, is that in our get ready, we don't know how long we're going to have to get ready. Because sometimes we want to say, well, Rev, I've been getting ready. And I'm like, you've been getting ready for 30, 32 years? Because if so, we could get in the expectancy phase. But see, we don't know how long it's going to take. And I think this is, you know, even in the 32 years, it wasn't all 50 states. There were still the holdouts, and it went on. So in our own situation, whatever it is we're planning, whatever it is we're declaring, get some snacks. Have some, have some snacks handy. Because this, you, you, you want to be prepared. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. It might be an immediate turnaround. You may declare your word, and the next thing we know, we'd be like, whoa. 
But that's not always the case. So this is like earthquake preparedness on some level. Some of it you may have to throw away and buy some new. Don't nobody here have no earthquake preparedness? Because if you had some, you'd understand what I was saying. Those little snacks you got in the year whatever, you're going to have to re-snack it. And this may be that for some of us. Is this making sense? And it also says that you're going to have to do more than affirm. You're going to have to get into the game of what is the shift. We know that Conyers first introduced it right after he was assassinated in 68. However, it, was, it didn't come up for a vote on the, on the U.S. House of Representatives floor until 1979. It took 11 years. And even then, it wasn't approved. It took a lot to get there. Whatever it is you're declaring for your life may take a lot. It may take a lot in order to get there. But look, I love this. Dr. Martin Luther King said this about that. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Yes. So however it's going to unfold, you're going to have to be in the game and actively participating. I know we'd all love to just run, just, oh. I was, you, there's the, oh, I'm in it. But you may have to crawl through part of this. I'm just saying. So that's the thing about teaching this because there's always phenomenal testimonies of the way the thing just moved. And sometimes for those of us for whom it's taking more, more time, more effort, more, we fall into a shame place. And maybe, worst case scenario, we start denying that we ever wanted it. We fall back so far from our heart's desire that we feel like it's safer to act like, I didn't want that know-how. I was just, that wasn't my real heart's desire list. That was just some stuff. I would moved on from that. But if you understand how it works, you realize that, that whatever it is that's required of you, you have it and you can do it. You just got to be willing to go the whole distance. You got to be willing to maybe do that crawl part. Even though you got on your track shoes. You plan to run. But you may just have to move in a different way. The key is that you're moving forward. You have to know you're moving forward. You must know. Is this making sense? Okay. All right. All right. Sometimes you be looking at me like, I don't know how you look at me. So this is important for one who may be called to crawl. Or sometimes, you know, it may not even feel like it's crawling. It may not feel like motion. You may just be down there on your belly and barely able to discern that you are moving in a direction. Does some, somebody knows what I'm talking about, okay? It would be, thank you, it would be important to know that universal principles, Ernest Holmes tells us, are no respecter of persons. That the universe has no favorites, even though while you lay in there, you can see the feet running past you you know that they are not special in a way that makes you not special. You are simply having your experience, and your experience is going to require this of you. I wish I had a different message for you, but I don't. This is it. He quotes Revelations 22 and 17. Let the one that is a thirst. Do you know what that means? The one who really wants it. 
Let the hungry one, let the thirsty one, let the, yep, the rest of y'all, could you scoot out the way, please? Could you scoot out the way? Because we got crawling and walking and maneuvering and ultimately running to do. Because why? We are determined to have the outcome. That's what it's saying. The one who, who is a thirst. The one who cannot live without it. The one that's clear that no matter what, I'm doing this. I'm being this. I'm having this. That one, we know them. We know someone in our lives. If, if, it may be us in addition. But everybody knows somebody that just can't be stopped. And not necessarily throughout everything in their life. But you know it was about this. Or it was about that. Or it was about the other thing for them. You know that it was something about them. That for that thing, it didn't matter. She said, well, now you know everybody doesn't get to. And you know the law and the rules and the, the way it happens and the culture and the enculturation and the isms. Lord, the isms. You can't, and they didn't pay none of that no attention. They just went ahead and did the dang thing. And the rest of us were left like, you did it? They, you, they, get, they actually, they signed and now you, what? But they were so crystal clear. Everybody has somebody in mind, yes? You got somebody in mind who has modeled that for you. Who went right ahead and did it. All the rules, all the wherefores, all the why nots. They went right on out and did that anyhow. Why? Because they thirsted for that. <laughs> and so they what? They were taking of the water of life freely. That's the promise. That's the, a bit of a covenant. If you come thirsty and you're willing to be and do whatever is required, you'll drink freely. Bring that thirst. Don't worry about it because it's going to be quenched. Y'all don't really, thank you. Y'all don't, y'all, somebody needs to, this would be the point where somebody would say amen. amen. Something, I ju I'm just saying. Yeah. So look. Ooh wee. Ooh wee wee wee. Okay. Um, shoot. All right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Ernest Holmes says that it appears from experience. Don't you, can you get that? That from experience, those of us who have, in his case, he has observed and worked with enough folks that he is drawing from his experience. And he says that it appears that the only way, not one of many, the only way an individual, the only way for an individual to constructively use creativity of this invisible but everywhere present mind, the creativity of this invisible but everywhere present mind is by means of our thought, our faith and conviction, and nothing else. You know, we could be here the rest of the afternoon and tomorrow morning with just unpacking this right here. That if you have a plan in mind that doesn't include shifting your thinking and looking at and constructing your faith and conviction in a, in a very directed, clear, intentional way, then what you doing? What exactly are you doing? Because this is, he's saying, this is the only way. There's nothing else. All the other stuff you're planning to do, that's like extra. I'm not saying it's bad or it won't help. It's extra. Yeah. It's like the, it, y'all know what extra is. 
you know, I'm not, okay. In our, our daily read now is 365 days for richer living. You know, it's almost like if you didn't read the book, but you just meditated on the title. As Psalm 1 says, night and day, day and night. If you just meditate on the title, 365 days for richer living. If you just like got that into the core of your being, you'd be all right. But I don't want you to miss the read, so I brought you some. So for today... Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker are offering us that we all wish to be brought out of darkness into the light. Everybody wants on the train, but everybody's not willing to go to the station. Everybody's not willing to get ready. We all want it. But to be free from the bondage of fear, superstition, and want, the mind must be what? Riveted. What does that mean? Somebody said nail down. What is riveted? Focus solely. It's, it's it at anchored. Nothing else. Yes. Riveted, the man said. Yes. Must be riveted on freedom. Not what they're doing to you. Not how awful it is. Not how unfair it is. Yeah, I about hit it, didn't I? Uh -huh. Riveted on freedom. Not how enslaved, not how trapped, not how unfair. Not See, none of that. That's a, none of that. None of that must be riveted. If ever there was a get thee behind me moment, this is it. You, I, can't, I can't think about that. Whatever, mm -mm, I can't think about that. Get thee behind me. Whatever those other thoughts are. Why? Because my mind is riveted on freedom. Free from whatever the confusion, the chaos, the prognosis. All of that. Yes? They say, if we do this, then we are brought from the shadow. If we do what, though? Let's be clear. If we have our mind riveted on freedom. Because sometimes we want to kind of jump to the next part. And we forget that it's an if-then proposition. That you got to be riveted on freedom. Then we are brought from the shadow of darkness into the light of the glorious freedom of the sons of God. But you... You ain't going till what? Till the mind is riveted on freedom. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. Ignorance of the truth is the great sin or mistake from which spiritual enlightenment alone can give freedom. But what is spiritual enlightenment other than an increasing capacity consciously to become aware of of the divine presence as peace, joy, and harmony. Oh, I'm loving the way they're laying it out, yes? Because if we take the time to get ready, we will we'll see some of this. I, I need to say that the bold is mine. This is where I'm adding emphasis. They did not hear. Because it occurs to me as I'm reading it that this is about us. That we want the light, we want the enlightenment, but we sometimes we just kind of want it. I mean, I just want it. I hadn't planned to do nothing to call it forth. I'm just, I'm just affirming and I'm praying, but I'm not changing my mind. I'm not changing my focus. I'm not doing anything to make it welcome in and as me. This is helping us to understand the proper order of things. If we are to know the truth that makes us free, and we need to if we're firm in freedom. If what they're saying is true, that we all wish to be brought out of darkness into the light, 
then we must know the truth that makes us free, that can do that. We must first recognize the essential non-reality of evil as a being, a thing within itself, a course in miracles now assigned. You have to understand that nothing's against you. That nothing has any power except the power you've given it. And the moment you take that power back, the moment you say, that was a good song, but it's not up to my current demand. It ain't going to take me where I want to go. It brought me here. So thank you. Like, yeah, but I can't take you to the next place. You, ain't, you, you can't be the one. Yes? Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. And then for today, the affirmation is this. We can do it together if you'd like. All right? Here we go. Therefore, today I am resolved to see only the good. And whenever evil in the form of lack, fear, pain, or uncertainty presents itself. Can I pause here and say, and it will. And it will. This is not like magically some of us are going to get through here. It will present itself. It's the nature of life and the way that our thoughts come from the past up to the present for us to do the work to clear them, to neutralize the power that they have. Yeah? Okay. We'll continue. I shall endeavor instantly to recognize its native nothingness, to know that it is entirely relative. I shall make every effort to see through this limitation to that which is boundless and free. Let me pause us here. Because for the ones who can understand the power in looking through the appearance, I know it looks hairy, it looks difficult, it's our knees are knocking, our teeth are just, we just don't, we had to look somehow through that to the truth. Got to figure out a way to know something. Now, this is the get ready part. You're not magically going to be able to do that. The boogeyman is going to boogie you out. <laughs> Unless you have a plan that's already ready for an with another vision. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Look at here. So here you are with your vision and your intention. Yes? You got it. You got your picture, right? Okay, two or three people over here. I'm going to go over here then. Good. So these, these people over here got visions. Okay. So you got your vision in mind. You immediately think, okay, this ain't the first time I had this vision in mind. Oh, y'all don't want me saying that. You want to act like all the visions is brand new. Okay. For some people. But for most of us, this is a, a, a version of a long-term vision. Yes? And the reason it's not realized yet is because stuff has come up. Lack, fear, pain, uncertainty. That the author just calls evil. Some evil stuff came up. Can we just? Okay. So you had it before. But some stuff came up, some evil stuff came up. And in the past, that wore you out. That's why you not, you haven't yet accomplished it. We still working on that. Yes, I mean, just, okay. But this time, because you're learning as you go, you're like, what if it comes up again? Now, I'm not mad with you if you hope it doesn't, but I need you to have a plan. Because it's been coming up. So we're not going to just act like you magically not going to have it come up this time. We're going to have a plan. Well, you know what that's, what if he called me? Oh, I'm going too far now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, 
I'm going to talk to these people. Because <laughs> they was wearing me out over here. <laughs> so look. Whatever the what if. <laughs> what if they do? What if they don't? What if they, what if, th all of that. We want to have the plan that when and if that comes up, here's what I'm going to do. This is why I want you to have a playlist. Because that's an easy one. Do you know how when you play your song, it takes up your entire mind. So don't make the wrong mistake and have it be the wrong song. Yes? So you're saying, now what if that thought about, who? what I'm going to do if? What am I, how am I going, you know, I want to leave this situation, circumstance, but what am I going to do? How, if it's a job, how am I going to support myself? What if the diagnosis, it, hmm, how am I going to deal with all that? What's your song? Somebody holler out, what's your song? New attitude. New attitude. Okay, what else? What, huh? This, my new song. This, week. this week. Expect the great. Expect the great. My new song. Blessing, blessing on blessing. Okay, so we got some... Yeah, who? Something, good. Something good. You see what I'm saying? So you want to feel, fill your entire consciousness so you can't think of nothing else. That's what it means when it's seeing past the appearance of whatever the boogeyman is here. You got on earphones. You can barely see the effect that you have conjured up because you are seeing within your spirit. I could hardly talk to y'all when I got up here because what? I was in my new song. I could hardly do this talk. I had to talk about that to work myself out the song. That's what I'm talking about. So you want something that so entirely takes you in. Remember that, was it the, uh, some iced tea commercial? Well, not you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need some folks who were, who were there then. Y'all remember that iced tea commercial where the person just nest tea, where they, they just felt, this is what you're doing. You're doing the nest tea. We're not advertising for nest tea. We're doing the tea thing. we just falling out into it. We're not worried about what's, in, you see what I'm, you're just going for it entirely so that you are completely enmeshed, immersed and enmeshed in that lyric. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Literally riveted on your vision. Y'all get it now. I'm done. So look. <laughs> so look, let me, what do we do? Oh, ooh, yes, Lord, yes. Okay, look a here. Look a here. Um, shoot. Shoot. Yeah, here we go. Talani Kennard wrote a song about it. The song is, includes these lyrics. So if you're not living the life you choose, she didn't mention y'all's names, though. So if you're not living the life you choose, God gives you the power to order your steps. Believe in yourself. Your success is at hand. Know that your every breath is spirit. Hold tight, which is the equivalent to Hold tight to God's unchanging hand because God always says yes. I give you Takiya Franklin and Valerie Joy Fitmont.
God always says yes, 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 yes. God always says yes, 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 yes. Sometimes we forget we have all that we need. God knows our purpose, our intents, and never redeem. Living by faith and walking in the light. God always says yes, keeping love in our sight. Every choice reflects what is in our minds, our purpose, our intents throughout life. God gives us all we need through spirit. Our minds believe. Our hearts help us. God always says yes. Says yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. God always says yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. God always says yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not living the life that you choose, God gives you the power to order your steps. Believe in yourself. Your success is at hand. God gives you everything you need. Hold tight to God's God outside. Always says yes. 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 yes, yes. God always, God always says. says yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. yes. God always says yes, 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 yes. God always says yes, 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 yes. God always says yes, 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 yes. God always says yes, yes, yes. Yeah.